What's up guys, Jay Skate here. Today, we're doing something a little bit different. We're testing out insoles again. I don't know if you guys remember, but a long time ago, I did a review with Footprint versus Remind. All right, so I'm interrupting myself now, I guess in present day, because that was like a couple months back when I initially started the insole review. I have the Footprint of Game Changer Orthotics. These are the standard Footprint insoles that they like to promote because they customly form to your arch, all that good stuff. I've been using these for the absolute longest and I still love them to this day. I have the Remind Destin, which is their standard like first level insole. These ones have a nice arch to them. It's for low to medium arches, just like my game changers are. And they have like this nice cupping piece at the back to hold your heel nice and firm in the insole. And then we have the Z liners, which also customly form to your arch difference between these and the footprints is that these you literally just toss into your shoe and you wear them until they start forming to your arch. Um, they do form to your arch. It doesn't show as pronounced as footprints does, but these weren't bad either. Now I do three separate skateboarding made simple volume one attempts in each of these insoles. In my personal opinion, it didn't really come out that well because it's also my first time skating the Ishads again without using the fat insole that comes in there. And as you guys know, without the React insole in the Ishads, that shoe is very thin. So tossing these insoles in here gave me real feel on how the insole itself takes impact without having any added features at all, which I thought was a really great idea. I took a drop test and all that stuff, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. So you guys see how I react off of just dropping to my feet from a high obstacle. So let's go on ahead and play that. Right now, I'm going to start with the footprint and we're going to see how the footprint skates. Without this React insole, this shoe is super thin. So I'm dreading hitting any type of green ball. Only one starts now. Normally when I land a kickflip like that, I do it over right away, but I'm not gonna just disrupt the test. All right, we're in the mind. Skateboarding made simple, volume one. I could not tell you guys what's going on in front shove right now, but this is the most struggle I've had for front shove in a long time. All right, guys, so I have the Z-liners here. Um, interesting thing I, I found about these insoles. These insoles say, simply wear them for seven days to get the max comfort out of them. We only got seven days. We're gonna try them right away. Just like putting the footprints, they tell you to put them in the oven first. I actually did do that with those uh, footprints, so technically it's not a fair test. But we're gonna just put them in anyway and see if we can uh, get some impact protection out of them day one. All right, we got the Z-liners on. Skateboarding made simple for the final time. Okay guys, we're actually gonna do the impact test right here where Luis is standing. We're gonna do the impact test starting with the footprint insoles. Oh, I'm not looking forward to it. I'm just gonna drop straight to my feet and let you know which ones feel like they take the most impact out of the uh, three. Test one, drop. Oh, oh. that kinda sucks. <laughs> I mean, my feet feel all right now, but the initial like feel of that was like, <laughs> testing it this way also because most times when you miss your board you're gonna land to your feet anyway and that's what you really need that impact protection so uh we're in their minds drop two right for the feet Whoa. i don't like that <laughs> all right so z liners these are the ones that are right now beefing with footprint about the egg test and all that stuff so these ones are your direct competitors footprints so these are gonna be the most important ones. Z liners in. Now earlier I did say these are the thinnest feeling out of the three. So I'm a little scared to jump off the top edge with this. It's a pretty good drop. It's a pretty good drop. 
Oh, that's actually crazy. What? That's nuts. Like, I felt the shock for all three of them. But right now, Z Miners one, Footprint two, or mine three. Tucked in like that? Oh my God. Okay. I feel way better about that. All right, so I did skateboarding made simple on all three of these insoles. I did the drop test straight to my feet, not on my board. And the first thing I have to say is no matter what insole you have, it's better to take your impact landing on your board than just straight to your feet because your board takes a good, decent amount of that impact that you're taking on a day-to-day -day basis. The moral of the story is you don't have any problems with your feet. If you land on your board a little bit more, nah, you could probably still end up with problems. That's the reason why we're talking about these insoles in the first place, to help you guys avoid injury, have more impact protection, just have more comfort as you skate. No matter if you're landing on your board all the time or not, I think these three insoles are a good replacement for your regular insoles that are in your skate shoes, but which ones will rock the best for you? So they were mine, Destin, are the insoles I did get injured in, but I did have some really good skate sessions in these before that injury did come up. This insole I found to be the most comfortable out of the three. Overall, the way it just feels in the shoe is it's the best out of the three. Can't even lie to you guys. They're comfortable because of the way that they use the thickness in the forefoot. The forefoot I found to be thicker than the other two, whereas the heel was pretty standard, but it was really comfortable because of the material it was used. So I found the Destin to be more of a comfort insole than a skate insole. While it brings you a bunch of comfort, this insole doesn't really hold its structural integrity around the arch. It's easy for me to just move this off to the side and flatten it, which overall led to me injuring my arch. I can say that I found more structural integrity with Remind through their Kush insole, their Medics, and then I know that their last insole is going to be the most structurally like good because all three of those last insoles after the Destin come with extra pieces that actually hold the arch in the exact position you can't really move it in the kush or in the medic and i'm not really sure about the last ones but i heard that they were the best in arch support and impact protection so i imagine that you can't do it in that one either and it uses the most material because that insole is 60 bucks so these are the cheapest insoles that you'll find on remind site but i will say for that extra five to ten dollars the kush will put you in a better spot but these are still really good aftermarket insoles because they will still perform better than most of your standard insoles. Now, with the Z-Liners, I was thoroughly surprised by these. These are the thinnest insoles of the three that I tested, yet they took impact at second best and they weren't that far off from the footprint game changers. I think the reason why they take impact so well is because it uses that gel material, but that hexagon tread pattern and how deep the grooves get around your heel actually hold the shape of the insole in that area. Now, I won't lie to you guys, this is more of a three millimeter insole than it is a five millimeter. So you could get these fitting in basically any of your cup sole shoes if you need that little bit of extra impact protection, especially if the cup sole is like thicker. Like for instance, your 480s by New Balance, Tiago 1010s, the 808s, thick insoles like that, most of your DCs, thick insoles like that, that only require like a small ortholite insole, these insoles will do great justice to. I found that these took impact pretty well. They weren't as comfortable as the Reminds at all. I would put these at number three in comfort out of the three insoles I tested, but impact protection definitely at number two and overall like skateability I'd put at number two as well. These actually do hold their structural integrity just based off of how thick and dense the gel is around the arch, but they are made for low to medium arches if you have a high arch i don't think z liner right now has anything out that supports a high arch or is thicker than three millimeters but i think if they were to keep doing what they're doing this insole company could be a force to be reckoned with the one thing i didn't like about this insole though is that this material on the top is way too slippery and they can use a material more so like the footprint or their mines then we have a really really solid insole now as far as my favorite insole company out of the three we have footprint First of all, these insoles have been skated for almost three whole years and they're now starting to fall apart, like basically starting to shred apart or whatever. But even with that, these still took impact at the best of the three. Number two in comfort, number one overall durability and basically skatability in the insole. The materials that Footprint use 
definitely take their impact pretty well. I don't really care about the egg drop situation or whatever. I just think about how does it take impact when I'm skating, if I miss a trick, if I land primo. And I got to say the game changers with that custom forming to the arch definitely leaves the arch in a nice like thick position where it's kind of hard to flatten it back out unless you were to really warm up this insole and really like flatten it in which you would have to have a very flat foot and have to be on the insole with your entire weight with that very flat foot to then try to press out this arch, which still I don't think would really press out because it's extra material kind of there to form to your arch. Now this specific pair forms more so to low to medium arches, but it's still custom. And if you were to have a higher arch and do the whole oven thing and then put your foot on there, it would definitely go that high up because I've had in insoles from Footprint to do that, which is dope. Now they definitely have better impact resistant insoles than the Game Changers. And I do happen to have one of them, but they don't work for every single shoe. But overall, still hype with what I got. They also even have King Foam Elite like custom orthotics, which is pretty sick too. So if I wanted to upgrade from these to ones that take more impact or are made to take more impact, but still have the custom arch, I sure can. And I do have a pair of them as well that I have in other shoes. Overall, the footprints are the best of the three insoles. With footprint being the best of the three insoles, that doesn't mean that you have to necessarily jump and only skate footprint. I still think all three of these insoles are really good aftermarket insoles and all three of them do serve different purposes. If you wanted an insole that was just more comfortable for your foot to just sit on, but you don't really need the impact protection that well, or you don't really need the arch support as much, the Destin would be that insole for you. And if you wanted to upgrade your arch support and your impact protection, moving up to the Kush or moving up to the Medic would be really good for Remind, which is why I will always recommend Remind as a good aftermarket insole for skateboarding. As far as the Z-Liners, um, if they decide to make thicker versions of their insoles, then it will work for shoes that maybe have very thin soles but require a thicker insole to feel more comfortable. But as far as your shoes that have like your standard sole or you don't need a very thick insole for, these Z-Liners will do its job. It definitely takes impact pretty well. Doesn't form to your arch as well as a footprint, but definitely still forms to your arch. And overall, it's a really great insole. And I hope that they continue to improve their insoles, especially the top material here, because I think if it had a better top material, it'd do a lot better in my list of insoles that you should check out. And as far as the footprint, you guys may already know, but they have multiple different insoles that form to your arch or don't form to your arch, take impact or are thinner. There's a wide variety of footprint insoles. It's just because they have a huge market at this point that are in skateboarding and outside of skateboarding, and they continue to work on their materials like as they create different insoles and stuff like that. I, I Honestly, I haven't had too many issues with footprint overall. I think the only issues I've had is ordering an insole and getting a completely different one. These are an example of them. I ordered a different pair of Game Changers. But because they didn't have the pair of game changers I was looking for, they gave me these game changers and an extra pair of insoles on top of that, which I will say is pretty dope. But I will say that that's something that Footprint is still working on, just the overall working at their website and basically being able to show you how each insole differs from the others. Because some insoles do look the same, but they then tend to be different. Like these are the five millimeter versions, but there's three millimeter versions of these. I believe there's seven millimeter versions now. And now they've gone as thick as 10 millimeter, which is pretty dope because shoes like the Leos and the Ashads that need like a thicker insole just to form and like fit good in the shoe because they have a paper thin sole, like those insoles work way better. So if you look right here, we have Jaws's uh, 10 millimeter insole. These literally fit in both the Leos and the Ashads perfectly. They take up the shoe like they're supposed to. And I believe that these are supposed to also form to the foot a little bit better, but they don't have a custom arch, but they are coming out with custom arch ones that are this thick that fit shoes like that. So then you could skate those shoes comfortably without having to like choke the hell out of the shoe in order to fit the impact resistance of a footprint insole or whatever. So that's pretty dope. I do like footprint overall the most out of all the companies just because they give you a more wide variety of insole choices, but all three of these companies are really good aftermarket insoles to check out for skateboarding. So hope you guys enjoyed the comparison because they definitely all had different things that set themselves apart from each other, but overall do their job as being impact resistant shoes and better aftermarket insoles. 
So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you have questions about any of these insoles or insole companies, definitely leave it in the comments below. I'd be glad to answer your questions or anything that you have about this insole review. And that's it. Make sure you make today your day. It's J Skate Day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.